Mr. Speaker, it's clear that the Prime Minister said last November that Canadians can be reassured that the integrity of our elections was protected. He was talking about the 2019-2021 elections today in the Globe and Mail. It's not the Conservatives saying it. The Globe and Mail has brought forward troubling facts. Agents of the communist regime are working actively to promote the election of a liberal minority government, and they did that in 2021. They are leading misinformation campaigns against conservative campaigns, and it goes on. Did the prime minister close his eyes deliberately on this because it led to an advantage for him? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Conservatives were paying attention back when we took office. We were putting in place measures to strengthen our democracy. Conservatives only seem to be awake to issues of foreign interference when it seems politically advantageous. But, Mr. Speaker, this is precisely why we have been saying time and time again that the threat of foreign interference is persistent, it's ongoing, it's why we need to continually be addressing this. Mr. Speaker, I urge the Conservatives to actually work together with solutions instead of working with China to undermine the trust in our democracy. The Honourable Member for Mégansé-Glérable. The tactics in CSIS report included donations to political campaigns and getting business owners to hire students to do volunteer work for campaigns. Donors sympathetic to the regime are encouraged to provide contributions to candidates favored by China. The Prime Minister knew during the last election that the Chinese Communist regime was involved in misinformation, especially in two ridings. The Prime Minister stated to the House of Commons that the integrity of our elections had not been undermined in 2019 and 2021, but CSIS's report shows the opposite. Who is telling the truth? of emergency preparedness. Speaker, the member opposites, I, I'd just like to if I take an opportunity to refresh his memory. On December 18th in 2020, I wrote that member a letter and every member in this House advising them about the threat of foreign interference and particularly the threat that China represented to our political integrity. That information was shared with every member of this House and bringing it to your attention. As well, we articulated the steps that this government was taking to protect our, our uh, uh, democratic institutions. Mr. Speaker, this government has been alive and alert to that threat and has taken action to protect our institutions. The Honourable me Member for Windsor West. Mr. Speaker, Canadians have some of the most expensive cell phones compared to other G7 countries, and the cost of living crisis is only making it more difficult for Canadians. The Minister is letting Canadians suffer with higher bills as he drags out the decision on the Rogers Shaw merger. Rogers gobbling up Shaw means less competition, less choice, higher bills, and worse service for families. Why is the Minister taking so long to defend Canadians to stop the merger? He has all the the evidence and the support of the NDP to stop this greedflation. Why won't he act? Here, here. The Honourable Minister of Innovation. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank the member for the question. It's a bit rich to hear from the NDP that because I am fighting for Canadians that I'm not defending them, Mr. Speaker. That's exactly why I'm saying that I will render a decision to your course. And I've said all along, Mr. Speaker, the only things that matter is to fight to bring price down. And the way we have achieved that in Canada is through competition, is to have a strong fourth national player. Mr. Speaker, Canadians know that the time that I'm taking is the time that I'm taking to fight for them, and I will continue to do that. The Honourable Member